Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Creating eBooks with the latest version of To Create a Story. There's not only stories that can be created with this app, your pupils can create and publish any type of eBook with this favourite app within Purple Mash. This webinar will go through the latest functionality that's just been rolled out, show you how to create stories and non-fiction texts, and will help give ideas as to how you can publish the books so they can be shared and enjoyed by other classmates or the wider school community, which is particularly helpful being that World Book Day is this week, and it's a nice way for children to be able to share and take pride in the stories that they've created. The first useful feature that you'll find quite a good time saver is that if you want to set a to create a story as a to-do, on the final stage of the to-do process, you can select which story mode you would like the children to complete from the drop-down menu. So when you click on the expand option, you can choose whether the children will complete a simple story, my story, or my adventure story. It will just help the children get started straight away with the, the level of story that you want them to create. Then within the app itself, there's been some subtle changes to each of the different story modes. The first one, the My Simple Story, children can still create their own images and animations and they can write their story text at the bottom. But you might notice that the space is now larger for the children to interact with. The focus is very much on their story writing. Children will be able to um, skip, skip to individual pages by clicking on numerical value and typing in a specific page number if they want to jump straight to that. And then they can add extra pages by clicking on the arrow button. You'll notice that we've removed some of the additional bottom, buttons at the bottom to make it a little bit more streamlined. The focus is on the story writing. Within the My Story and My Adventure Story mode, we've also made some changes to help uh, usability and functionality within the app. So for example, um, children can create backgrounds, they could import their own um, and they can choose from, they can draw their own, they can also choose from a selection within the clip art picker area. Um, and then they can clone this to other pages as well by uh, using the copy page and the paste page options. What's also quite helpful as well is whenever children um, add new pages to their story, if they're not just clicking through using the arrow and they want to insert a page, then it will ask them where they want that page to be inserted, after the page they're on or before the page they're on. So that's just quite helpful if they're wanting to edit and amend the story that they've created. Updates to the My Adventure Story mode of the To Create a Story app include additional animation um, and editing features that you can now make use of. Just like the other story modes, you can insert your own backgrounds. And if I now wanted to add a sprite to that background, I might want a picture, in this case, um, so this is a picture of like a knight, someone who could guard the castle for me. So I can change the animations just like I could previously, I can make it move and totter around the screen, I might make it want to go left and right, for example, and I can make some um, additional sound animations as well, and I can record my own. Um, if I just can now click the magic one, for example, I can also link it to go to other pages, um, to go back and forth. I'm just going to leave that for now as it is. And you'll see that my sprite now has the expand option to enlarge or shrink the size, which wasn't previously available. Um, I can easily tilt without it being resized as well to make it appropriate for where it needs to be on the page. And you'll notice that when I click on the sprite, uh, let me just click on it again, in the top right hand corner, we have two little icons. So we can see there's a little purple person figure. That means that an animation has been applied to this sprite. And the little sound bite icon that's purple indicates that there has been a sound added to this sprite. These options would be greyed out if there were no sound or movement animations added. You can click onto these symbols here and it'll open up the animation options and you can alter, remove, and adapt as necessary. 
You can also click on the pencil icon and it will take you to the edit mode where you can make alterations if you need to. And what's quite a useful feature, and I'm sure the children, it will definitely save some time for them, is that you can clone the sprites really easily. So this little icon here will allow you to make multiple copies of the same sprite and it will automatically apply those animations that were added to the first one. But you can then obviously alter and maybe remove the animation um, or add additional ones. Okay, so that can be used as quite a nice, powerful way that will hopefully bring the focus more into the writing and the children won't have, be having to spend quite so long in adding the effects um, onto the different sprites they've made. Also, if I was to maybe create um, a fire breathing dragon, and apologies for my, my drawing skills here, but maybe dragon, four legs quickly, just so you can see what I mean. Here, I've got an, a drawing that obviously I've used the painting tools to create, and this will, I can apply animations to just like I could in um, the My Story mode. But what's quite helpful is at a glance you can see the sprites are the ones that have got this deselected area here. And then I have my animation that has been uh, added as well. So it's just a quick reference to show which ones um, you know, can be edited uh, and manipulated quite well using the animation features. Okay, so actually creating stories and books within to create a story app, the children can choose from My Simple Story, which, you know, the clues in the title, it's a simple way of the children to be able to use the different coloured and textured pens to create images on the, um, on the main part of the page, and then they can put corresponding text underneath. So for example, if the children were doing All About Me as a topic, they could draw a picture of what makes them happy and they could write in the box, I am happy when I'm with friends. And they can apply animations to the images they've drawn by clicking on these options on the right. So they can preview what their picture will do when they add the different animations to it. If I choose the expanding style option and press OK, then the children can play that book as to how it will appear when the page is turned and they can see their animation being applied, which is quite nice. Also, children can add sound effects within the simple story option. So you can see they can choose from different sound effects, for example, applause, bangs, chimes, boings and so on. Children can create as many different pages as they like. Their book can be as long as they like. Okay, they can undo any changes they've made by clicking on the undo and redo options as well. It's a nice way just to be able to, to come up with their own content and have the corresponding image that matches. When we have the My Story option, similar to the Simple Story, there's a space to put an image and to put the text. But you'll notice here that we can actually import a background, which can be quite useful to help think about scene setting and descriptions. So when you click on the background option button, children can either draw their own in this space here using the tools on the left, or they can uh, take a picture, take a selfie, they can copy an image and paste, or they can choose from the clip art library as well. So we've got a nice bank of some good story starter backgrounds that the children can choose to use in their stories, or they can upload a file of an image that maybe they've saved um, from somewhere else. I press OK now, then that could be the background, and the children could then draw maybe like a dragon. Ooh, there's going to be like a red dragon on, on this picture. Excuse my artistic skills. And then they can colour it in. They could add different colours and layers. But for speed, I'll just do a big... Looks a bit like a red ferret here, doesn't it? <laughs> if I add that here, I could maybe pop yellow eyes. And if it is going to be breathing something like fire, this dragon could have something coming out of its mouth like this. OK, so here I can apply some animations again to my, um, my picture that I've put on. And I might want it to move across the page like that. Uh, it could rotate, it could uh, split in half or move side to side and so on. So whichever one you're wanting to use, the children can experiment with that. We also have the record option. 
but this time there's now the option to record a voiceover. So if the children were to write their story, they could have, you know, large dragon fire. They could either record a sound effect or they could narrate their story for somebody to listen to. So if they're creating a story for a friend to be able to follow through, they can record the large dragon breathed fire. They can preview that as well. If they click on the play option, the large dragon breathed fire. You can hear that. You've got the animation that moves across and then obviously the, the voice note is then played for the reader. So that can be uh, done, you know, on each page. If you wanted to copy this page and paste it onto the next one, and then you can just change some of the information, maybe add wings, maybe this dragon grows wings. I can change the information here as well and write as much as I would like. Okay, so if you click on the, um, the planning button at the top, you'll be able to see an overview of all the pages that have been written. So children can see that story progression. If they're following like a story map, if they're writing fiction text, then they would be able to see that they've got things in the right order. If they're writing a non-fiction text, then again, they will be able to see a preview of the content and the picture on each page. The My Adventure Story can be used in brilliant ways across both Key Stages 1 and 2 for children, not to create their own adventure or quest stories, but to create things like non-fiction text as well. Um, you can see by the list of additional features we have here that there are um, extra animations, actually the background features, and you can add links between pages here as well. So for example, if I was going to um, create a story, let's say about life cycles of a, of a frog, then I might want to um, include uh, an introduction or just a, a page if I can put the background. Again, I can choose whether to take a selfie, copy and paste any images, draw my own, uh, but if I just maybe choose um, an underwater picture, let's see, maybe the pond picture of a frog. So I can look at that, click on the sprite as well, and then it takes me to um, the clip art picture. But again, I can add my own if uh, needs be. I'll find this little frog creature here. So again, I can add animations. I can preview what those animations will look like. If he's going to jump, if he's going to do a bit of a flip or a bit, of a bit of a hop across. I might get him going up and down like that. Uh, I can add additional animations as well. I can choose how long they repeat for, or if there's a delay. Uh, I might just add a sound as well, maybe a boing sound. Okay, so if I add that to, if I add that to the animation, press okay. And I might just call this here, life cycle of a frog. Now, the planner is particularly useful for the um, adventure story mode because it will allow you to be able to link up your pages as appropriate. So what I might put um, on this next page is I might just upload an image of a tadpole. So I've saved an image. I'm going to choose the file from my PC. And where are we? Let me try and find the lifecycle picture here. So if I go first of all for frog spawn, then I can add that, I can zoom in, I could animate over it as well by, um, by using the drawing tools on the left, toggle between the two, but if I'm just happy with the image as it is, then I can call this the frog spawn stage. This is where children could write as much information about frog spawn, how many um, individual frogs can come out of a, a collection of frog spawn, how long it takes and so on. But for now, I'm just going to give you um, just an overview so you can see what it looks like. Then the next page, we could have um, another background and we could have an image with, I choose a file again, this time with a tadpole. And add that to the order. Press OK. I'll come back to you in just a moment when I've added a few more pages. OK. Here I've got uh, one of my pages, I've added the life cycle of a frog overview. And if I look at the planning again, I can see that I've got all of my pages organised in a linear fashion. 
Now, I might want this to be one where the children or the children, people who are reading it can reference back and have a look at the different stages where I've provided further information. So here, um, if I add a link button, and I'm going to call this Hog Horn, I can change the colour of the button uh, if I wish. I might just have it as the green one, because hogs are green. And here I'm going to have the link being an action to another page. So I can make it go to currently page none. If I click on it, I can select which page I want that link to take me to. And I want it to go to the frog spawn page. So I click OK and then press OK. And I can now place that link wherever I want it to be on the life cycle. So I can pop it there. I can add subsequent links for the different stages. So like tadpole here and then that tadpole page will be linked to that button. So if I now go back to my plan you'll see here it clearly illustrates where the children will be directed to when they click on those individual buttons. So if I were to play my book, if I were to read it, press OK, my frog's jumping like that, I can read through, obviously I've left these spaces blank, the children could provide further information about what's happening at each stage. And then when they want to review the different stages of the life cycle of frog, they could then click through and revisit the, uh, the page that it has been linked to. So the, the use of the link buttons are quite a powerful device for children to be able to navigate through um, in different routes. This example obviously is non-fiction, but equally can be used for story modes. You know, does the character go into the forest or into the castle, click the each button and it'll take you to the relevant page. So as I'm sure you can imagine, it can be used in a really creative way for children to, to make their own stories or non-fiction text. A great way to give children a purpose for writing and creating their own books is by sharing it with others. And a great way of doing this is creating and sharing to a display board. Uh, if you haven't done one of these before, you can click on the sharing button on the top and select the cog icon. You can see here I've created one called World Book Day 2021. Seeing as it's only a couple of days away, it'd be a great idea for children to be able to share their stories for each other to read. If you want to create your own display board, click on the cog icon and you can create a new one by clicking on the green and white plus icon. Now the one that I've made, the World Book Day, is right down at the bottom here. And if I want to create one or edit one, you'll see you have these options. So you can give your display board a name and a description. You can add an icon if you wish by clicking on the pencil option. I just downloaded a picture, a stock image of the World Book Day icon. You can choose whether you want to hide people's names, but if you're wanting to share this for you know, helping install pride in children, I'm sure they'd really like their name to be viewed, but that's up to you and your, your school policies. And also you have the option to hide names. You can set it so that only staff can place um, work on the display board. If you leave this unchecked, then the children can put their work on the display board, but it will always be um, subject to approval by a staff member before it can actually be viewed by others. If you're wanting to share display board with the wider community, maybe parents, grandparents and so on, you can make your display board um, visible to public. And when you click save, you'll be able to get links like a QR code and embed code that you might want to pop on your school website. If you want the whole school to be able to see it, just to share it far and wide across all the year groups, you can select all school. But if you want it just to be a specific class, maybe your own class, then you can choose from the list once you uncheck the all school option. And once you've created it or made any changes, just click save and it will update uh, the changes that you've made. So I've set uh, some of my children uh, the challenge of creating their own book, given them the chance to create their own theme, whether it's story, non-fiction, poetry, and I should have um, a few bits of work in my view folder option here. So I've got a few children's work and their stories that they've created. I can have a look, clicking on the mark button. I can see this is a little book of some rhyming cut books of poetry and the children have, or in this case, Blake has created some uh, animations on each of the pages, which is lovely. So if you are wanting to select either a single piece of work or multiple pieces of work, 
you can hold down the control button and select them. And if you're not seeing the to display button, to, to display board button along the top of your screen, it might be hidden behind this expand button here. So you should be able to see a to display board sharing option. When you click on that, I'm going to find the display board I want to share it to, this one, the World Book Day. And if you're happy for any comments that you've put on a child's piece of work to be shared, you can click that, that option and any comments you've put on will be visible by all the um, people who are accessing that display board. If I now push, click push work to board, then the children will be able to see, ooh, excuse me, the children will be able to see their stories and share it amongst the audience that you've deemed appropriate. If I open up the World Book Day display board, because I'm a teacher and I pushed it, it's automatically approved. If a child pushes their work, then it's always subject to approval. You can slide the edit button to the right and you can approve ones that have been posted. So for example, if I go to Joe, see what book he's created. He's created a book about the galaxy and his is a, oh, it looks like it's a non-fiction one. It's an adventure text. So we click on a planet to find out more. So we click on Earth and we can see that he's, he's done the hyperlinks to take to different areas of the book. So you can see here. Now, obviously, this is just a demonstration, so these pages haven't been fully created yet, but this gives you a chance to see how it would appear for other members of your class or wider school community to be able to read each other's lovely work. OK. OK, I hope today's webinar has been useful for you and given you some ideas as to how you might use the To Create a Story app with your class. With World Book Day being just a couple of days away, it's just a nice way to be able to be able to share and encourage a love for story writing and creating books, non-fiction books with your learners whilst they are working from home and learning from home. So I hope you get to enjoy it. It'd be great for you to share some examples of uh, children's work with us. We also have, you might have noticed, our Book of Hope competition. Children can use the To Create a Story app to, um, to create their Book of Hope entry. Um, more information can be found when you click on the link in the feature panel on the home screen. So if anyone is entering the competition, the best of luck. And I hope you enjoy using the To Create a Story app with your children. Thanks for your time. Happy purple mashing.